joining us today. This is our uh, first time doing this, and we're excited about it, but there will probably be some glitches, so bear with us. Um, uh, Feminist Bird Club, just for those who aren't familiar, I think probably most of you are, but um, is dedicated to promoting inclusivity and birding while fundraising and providing a safe opportunity for members of the LGBTQIA plus community, BIPOC and women to connect with the natural world. Um, and today, uh, as you probably know, thank you for joining us and thank you um, for your donations. If you donated when you, when you joined or if you want to donate, um, we'll be putting, we'll put this link in the chat, um, but today 100% uh, of the donations are going to go to the Repro Legal Defense Fund. The Repro Legal Defense Fund covers bail, covers bail and funds strong defenses for people who are unjustly targeted by police or prosecutors for ending their own pregnancy, that is for self-managing abortion outside of a clinical setting. Um, and Molly just put the link in the, uh, in the chat. Um, Again, I'm in Durham, North Carolina. I'm one of the co-leaders of the Durham chapter. We've also got um, Molly uh, here from National and Megadipa from Massachusetts. Um, and they, they have, we've all been organizing this. And so um, we'll be monitoring the chat. Feel free throughout, this will be a conversation. So feel free to jump in um, on your microphone or feel free to jump in the chat and we'll be paying attention to both. And what we're gonna do today is look at a bunch of bird cans from around the world. <laughs> and we were doing our practice run yesterday and it's actually really fun. Uh, it's kind of kind of amazing and exciting. And it's funny because you'll probably, I saw a bunch of birds that I had no idea what they were. So um, we will probably focus less on IDing everything and more just on enjoying them, um, but certainly, um, if you see something and, and you can idea and nobody else seems to be able to, please tell us what it is. Um, let me see if there's anything else I need to say. I don't think if there's anything else I need to say before we jump in. So, uh, give me a second to pull up the feeds. I'm going to share my screen. Um, and we've got a bunch of cams to go to and give me one second. Hopefully this will, we'll get right in there. Okay, got it up on mine. We're gonna share screen and are we seeing birds? Yes. Cool. Okay, so this is this is um a camera in Alabama. Um And I'm actually not sure exactly where in Alabama, but they have said they've identified over 50 species. So looks like we got an Eastern bluebird. I think it would be funny if everybody just started yelling out species. <laughs> a downy or a hairy back there, woodpecker, a morning dove. Cardinal. Yeah. <laughs> Titmouse. Yeah, the titmouse just flew across. Nut uh, hatch. Oh, just went left. Yeah, it did look like a nut hatch. What's going on on the right? Is there like a naked bird there? <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty funny the squirrel and the chipmunk together. <laughs> um, the red bee on the right. Cardinal. Female. Oh, it's a female cardinal. Thank you. Yeah. And for those who might not have understood the naked bird joke, if you look in the top right, there's like a blurred, like pixelated part. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. So, yeah, well, I don't think we'll ever know what's behind that. <laughs> That's interesting. Is that a chipping sparrow, it looks like? There's so much going on on this screen. I love these feeders because this particular stream has like 10 different feeders and there's um, one of those like tube feeders, there's a hummingbird feeder, there's sweat, there are some more flat feeders for like 
ground feeding birds like doves. So there's a lot going on on the screen. So if you're having trouble following along, I am too. <laughs> Chickity. So Megan, but Suet is the ones in the cages in the back top middle, but I've never actually, what is Suet? It's like oil and fat and all kinds Who's of stuff for birds. What is the bird that was with the female cardinal right there on the right? Um, it's, an, it's a nuthatch. Is it a nuthatch? Yeah. Okay. Or brown, brown headed? Is that it, a thing? A white breast. Yeah, brown headed. I think it is a brown headed. I've never seen a brown headed nuthatch. Oh, I forgot it's in Alabama. I'm used to yeah. Massachusetts birds. We have yeah. them in North Carolina. They're super cute. In Florida, we had one too with uh, who was feeding its baby in the tree hole in a, oh, it was in Asheville. Okay, it was in Asheville. The suet that I have is um, beef fat, corn, white millet, oats, and blueberries here. Thanks. It's nice to see the brown headed. Um, if you ever hear, hello, Mister Chickadee. <laughs> Chickadee. Oh, there's titmouse. Titmouse. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's a titmouse. It just flew off. It was mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. What's that one? That's the titmouse. This is so cool. <laughs> if you do ever find yourself in the South or other places where uh, brown-headed are, they sound like squeaky dog toys. Oh, that's, that's cool. It's really fun. Yeah, I'm watching the feeders in my parents' backyard right now. We've got some sparrows and a deaf bee. Mm -hmm. so two, so. Yeah. <clears throat> there was a ruby-throated hummingbird earlier, which was nice. Whoa, bluebird. How do people attract bluebirds to their feeders? I've never had a bluebird at my feeder. My parents hey. put up two bluebird houses yeah. and we've had yeah. two pairs of bluebirds hanging out in the yard ever since. There's a lot in North Carolina, uh, Asheville, there's been a lot of um, sightings at the sanctuary. Uh, my brother's in-laws put out um, mealworms that, and they really yeah. dig the mealworms yeah, yeah. And, you have sure. and you have to have the bird houses facing east which is kind of fun really mm -hmm. wow. they like it better than that <laughs> huh why do they like east i don't know they're yeah. eastern bluebirds huh oh, oh okay <laughs> But actually, it is recommended that you do point them in a specific direction. <laughs> I wanted to get my joke in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was good. <laughs> is it because of sunrise? I think so. Or something about the way the wind blows, because the winds tend to mostly go west to east. I don't know. Hmm. I, I don't know either. I could probably find out. That makes sense. I'm a thrasher on the ground on the right. Yeah, that's what yeah. it looks like. All I see is the chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> Those chipmunks are going to fill up. Oh, look oh. at his cheeks. Oh, their cheeks are getting all filled up. Yeah, and I think it's a downy woodpecker with that shorter beak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree with that. I had no idea that we, we read a study that on the Audubon or the Cornell. It was Cornell Lab. Um, yeah. That the chipmunks are the biggest stealers of bird eggs in nests. One of the biggest stealers of eggs. Mm. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Adorable murder murderers. <laughs> yeah, I know, really. <laughs> Brooks, can you unmute the video? I feel like there's probably a lot of sound coming through. My fault, yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh there's some noises. Yeah, you got that thrasher that somebody pointed out way behind, not just one behind the stump. Yeah. Oh, there. Yeah. There's a chickadee. Chickadee. Yeah. 
with these people. Yeah. So that's a downy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Erica asked in the chat, what is the black and white bird on the left? And I'm not sure if it's still there, but the black and white bird that I'm seeing on the left is the downy. Wood. Downy. And then also Mikkel asked, what kind of chickadee? Ooh, good question. Um, Carolina is the guess. Does anyone know? No. Isn't everything south of New Jersey a Carolina chickadee? That sounds like a, a good rule. Yeah. I don't know how to tell them apart visually. I've tried and they look the same to me. Yeah, I can only tell um, by their vocalization. Okay, Stacy says Carolina chickadee, yes. I only know Carolina and Mountain in the West. I don't even know what's in the, what kind is in the North East. Black capped. Yeah, okay. thank you. And then um, B asked, can you share what the feed source is? I don't know if I completely understand that question. Oh, I think the link. Oh, can we, we can share, we're gonna share the whole playlist. Yeah, I, so since I'm recording, I'm like a little scared to move my screen around, but Megadeepa, do you have the link? Cause this is, I just need to say this playlist was compiled by Megadeepa and it has over a hundred cams on it. Um, we're obviously not gonna get to all of them, but um, they made a really excellent playlist. So we're really excited to share it with you. <laughs> I think I might share like a condensed, like 30 feed version. <laughs> But we'll share it afterwards. Okay, okay. This particular one is from someone's backyard in Alabama. They've um, been doing this for a while. And Brooks said that they've seen more than 50 species. Is that right? That's what their notes say. Yeah. Um, Jamie has requested that we share them all. I just shared an article about how Bluebird houses should be placed in the chat. Oh, look, a wren. Oh, thank you. Ooh, yeah. red belly. Ooh. Red oh. Red bellied woodpecker and a carrot. It's a Carolina wren. Is the Carolina wren the one that's on the, yeah, I see. Thank Up you. on the suet next yeah. to the little house. I'm curious about the pronunciation. I've never heard it pronounced suet. I've always heard it suet. I think it's a potato potato situation. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, um, should we try another view? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm excited for the next one. So this I will love, be the, fun, the, fun I love the Carolina Wren. Mm -hmm. Me too. Well, we can leave it for a second and see if we get a look. <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll come closer. I have a question about the ground feeders. I'm not sure if anyone knows. Do you mix seeds with like stones or wood chips that they sort of forage in them or do you just fill them with seeds? I'm not sure. That's an interesting what's, what's that big bird above the um, chipmunks on the, on the right? It looks like it's got color. Maybe a. It looks kind of like it has a gross beak type beak. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, it does. It kind of looks gross beak beak, but it's not. Maybe a juvenile. Oh. Something? Yeah, I think it's a juvenile oh. cardinal, maybe. Oh, yeah. maybe. Yeah, you can see the red on the tail once it's. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, for a minute I thought it was a female, but. Oh, oh. There you go. <laughs> That was interesting. Oh, there's the wrens. Look at them. Oh, I love those Carolina wrens. I love their little tails and how they stare them up. And they're so, they'll be singing and then all of a sudden they'll see something and go, whoop. You know, they're just Ooh, go, that, go, go, that go here, that bug. Oh, there's a, there one over there now. Muting. All right. For time's sake, we're going to tear ourselves away from the wrens. And. Actually, can we try hummingbird feeders next? Yeah, definitely. Thank you. I just I saw your chat. Uh, yes. 
They say durable is the new black. Okay, Thanks, no one says that, Clark. but yeah. it's true. Just, hey, there's a bird. <laughs> a little bird. A Kelly bird. Megadeepa is also um, monitoring all these feeds to see who's got the most action for y'all. So. That's so many hummingbirds. Where is this? Uh, California? This is in California. So what species, I mean, we only have the ruby throated in Massachusetts, so I'm curious about what. Some of these are black throated. Oh. They also have Anna's hummingbirds mm -hmm. in the south. I don't know where this is. Studio City? California. But in Southern California, there's also Costas. Wow. There, there could be others wherever this is. Uh, Studio City, California. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> is there a link for this um, bird feeder, uh, this cam? Sorry? Can you is there a link for this cam so I can go see it uh, in, in the future? Oh yeah, we're gonna share. We're gonna share a link to um, a YouTube playlist that has all of the cams that we've looked at. Okay, um, great. That's and amazing. I just wanted to say there was a really great question in the chat um, from Steph asking how do they get so many hummingbirds at once? And I think this is a really great question because I just have one hummingbird feeder out, and there are constantly. Um, ruby throated hummingbirds fighting so I'm also surprised that these hummingbirds don't seem to be fighting more but maybe it's because there is so much nectar for them to drink so they are not competing as much would this be a good time to advise people on how to make their hummingbird nectar yes please just I know that the red dye is really pervasive I don't remember the exact ratios. If someone could help me out with that, that'd be great. Yeah, I think I do one to four. I think. Yeah, that sounds right. One to three or one to four um, sugar just to water. And um, I personally clean mine once a week. Thank you. And it's just table sugar, not like uh, brown sugar or anything like that. Yeah, thank you, Tracy, yeah. for confirming that it's one to four. And Jamie asked, how often do folks have to fill them? It really depends, um, but I usually will do once a week. There's only really two or three hummingbirds that come to my feeder that I can tell. Um, my neighbor has a couple more, so I think they're over there as well. Where are you located out of curiosity? I'm in the Catskills in New York. Okay, cool. Thank you. And then Monique asked, what are the one, what are the hummingbirds with the orange? And Steph suggests maybe a Rufus. Yeah, I think Rufus is in range for this. I'm trying to think, I was in California kind of recently and out of Anna's or I'm really bad with humming, hummingbirds, but out of the two that I was seeing a lot of, one was more orange than the other and one was more green. Does anyone, anybody else know how to ID any of these? <laughs> um, Not without a bird book. <laughs> Jamie says, I think the one in the foreground in the front of the nest is Anna's. Oh yeah, with the little white eye. Are you talking about this one? And the pink nesting ball, not nest. Yes. Can y'all are y'all able to see my cursor? Yes. Is yeah. No, I meant over on the left hand side. Uh, see the ball that has like the wool inside of it. Oh, it just flew. Ah, oh, yeah. it's the one flying in the foreground right now. I think that's an anus. This one. Okay. Cool. Uh, and thank you, Samantha, for in the chat writing orange equals Rufus and green equals Anna's if this cam is West Coast, which it is. So that's great. Uh, that's great. Um, and then Monique says, I clean mine every two to three days, depending on the weather, but I also don't fill it full. 
um, we have reapers here in Seattle area, but it's a little harder to see on my computer than to be replaced. I'm I'm right there with you. Are there black pen hummingbirds on the screen? Sorry, what did you ask, Megadipa? Are there black chinned hummingbirds here? Uh, Steph says maybe center feeder on the left side. Oh, oh, I can't tell any hummingbirds apart. That's just something that I've heard of and I always wanted to see what they look like. I, I feel like us people on the East Coast like really are at a disadvantage <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of learning them. And that's my excuse. <laughs> but it's useful because if you have feeders up later, like in October, I think you're likely to see the occasional vagrant Rufus hummingbird and so on. And sometimes we just miss it because we're just used to seeing one type of hummingbird. So we think they're all the same. Very true. Hummingbirds and seagulls. Mm. Or gulls are just so hard to identify. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if we'll see any gulls on any of the cams. I don't think we saw any yesterday. Mm. Are there beach cams? Yeah. There's one on Seal Island. Um, let me let me see if it has any goals. There's there's um the puffin one. All right, let's see. I don't okay. know one you're talking about, but it has an odd angle on it right now. Find what you need Nose to get the done. Granger, supplies and solutions for every industry. Twenty-five dollar uh, active sunglasses sorry. for anyone. Uh, that includes you, Wildcat. We. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what are those? We just traveled out of the country, all the way to the Czech Republic. Wow. This is a white stork nest. Oh, and there's deer in the background. Oh my great. god, look at how they're sitting with their little what? hands out in front of them. <laughs> oh my god. What country are we in again? Czech Republic. Oh, wow. Are those deer in the background or? Yes. Yeah. I think this is in a rehabilitation <laughs> center. Also, oh. I've never seen stork nests on the ground except for here um but there's a parent in the background um and the two on the nest are juveniles wow. and there's also uh, i think deer. there's deer there's a gray leg goose oh, maybe no, there's some kind goose. of goose back there <laughs> an egret an egret and an egret yes very similar to our Florida um, well, storks. They, they look prettier. They're much prettier than the Florida <laughs> storks, yes. <laughs> the, the wood storks? Yeah. 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 We have a what do you do with it? Boy, they're white. Okay. They're beautiful. Yeah, they are. Look at the black bill versus the yellow on them. Um, I know. I'm looking at that too. It's like starlings. Hmm. Okay, so Megadipa had sent me these notes about this cam when I think this is referring to the two. Why do they have different bills? Different what? Beaks.
with uh, the black and the pink? Yeah, I think that was the question. I'm so not I think, sure if it was directed uh, yeah. towards us or not, but um, okay. you can go ahead and answer, Brooks. So. Well, no, I think Megadiva may may already know is what I was going to say. I got distracted. What are we talking? The black beaks versus the pink beaks. Do you know if it's the juveniles versus the adults? Yeah, the black ones are juveniles. How and why do they change when they grow up? Is that a mallard back there? I just heard it cracking. <laughs> and maybe like, is that a greater white fronted goose? Do they have those in like Europe? Who went away? I'm not sure, but <laughs> Steph in the chat said that um, she thinks they are roe deer, if anyone is wondering. R-O-E deer. Oh. Wow. And someone in the chat also said that it looks like a cattle egret, which I agree that it does, but I have no idea if it are. In I think range. the beak is too dark for a cattle egret. I would guess little egret as well as um, somebody in the chat just suggested, Jamie. Okay. Thank you. It's a great egret. I think it's a great egret. Yeah. It's not a cattle egret. I don't think. Oh, look at that neck. That's kind of, hmm. And then it's Czechoslovakia, so it's some version of. Hmm. I think it's a very skinny swan. The <laughs> 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 great egrets have yellow bills. Oh, fat. Mm. And then also we had the question, how and why did the beaks change color from juvenile to adulthood? I'm going to go ahead and say I have no idea. But if anybody else has an idea, I'd love to hear it. I can do a quick Google. In the meantime, Megadeepa um, sent some biographical information on these storks, which is pretty interesting. So Hansik, in terms of the adults, the male is the one without a black ring on his left leg. So I think that's the, um, the female Johanka, or Johanka probably that you can see back there. Um, the, so Hansik, the male has been at the rescue since 2003. He's missing a wing, but has still managed to raise over 50 baby storks with various females over the years. Some were natural, some adopted. Um, in 2019, they raised a whole brood of orphans since they didn't have any of their own. Um, Johanka was born in 2017. Um, yeah. Okay, we've got some great stuff in the chat. Okay, we're gonna, I've got an update on exciting development on another cam, so we're gonna go there live and see if we can catch. catch okay, some. great. And uh, while, we're, while we're going there, um, Helen said the goose seems to have a condition that's caused by being, feed, being fed bread, which is a good reminder to not feed birds bread, which is very true. Thank you for the reminder. Um, and then- so Ooh, go ahead. How, how did she how did she identify the condition by looking at it? Um, Helen, if you want to share. I loosely remember what you're talking about. Like, remember this condition where like the wings kind of yeah, okay. Samantha said it's called angel wing, but their their wings look kind of like an exploded pillow. Um, um, 
got some osprey feeding action going on. Yeah, and I... Do you know where this cam is? I was just looking, I lost it. This is the one you recommended because of the feeding. Um, negative but rock. I don't want to go out and look again because everybody will have to see my screen change. Um, oh. Oh, this is, sorry. Yeah, so these Osprey, they're at the, I'm going to pronounce this wrong probably, but the Lock RK Archive, A R, so L O C H, and then A R K A I G. Again, we'll send out the links later. Um, pine Forest in the Scottish Highlands. Scotland. Yep. Um, does anyone in the chat or anyone on the Zoom um, have a local osprey nest near where you live? got a sort of. And then Mikkel asked, any guesses on how old the chicks are? I've seen osprey nesting um, at, I want to say Plum Island in Massachusetts. Oh yeah, that sounds like a good place for them. Yeah, Plum Island is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it seems like a lot of people have them pretty close by. And I know that while we were preparing for this, um, Megadeepa especially was just so excited about how many different um, places there were osprey cams. And mm. I personally love ospreys. I don't have, I was going to wear my Feminist Bird Club shirt today that has an osprey on the back of it. Um, but they were my, the species was my vote for the patch this, this, this year because they are seen in so many places. And I grew up out on Long Island in New York where like, as I was getting older, gradually there were more and more ospreys because they were recovering from um, like DMT and bald eagles as well. But I just see them as such a sign of hope. So I, uh, I'll never get sick of them. <laughs> I found like 50 different osprey cams and it was torture trying to shortlist them because they're all so incredible. And I found, um, I found ones in like all over Europe, like Finland and like Scotland and the Netherlands and so on, but also like um, Australia and stuff. And I grew up birding in India and we have osprey there as well. And I think it's so incredible for a bird to have adapted to living in so many different situations because like right now the Finland cams I think it's, they have like two hours of night, like the rest of it is just daylight. And I don't know, it probably takes a lot to be able to get enough sleep with that much light because I really struggle with sleeping during the summer and we still get a lot of dark, so. Megadeepa, do you know, are there, are they different subspecies around the world? I just shared a link with a range map for ospreys worldwide and it's very interesting. Cool, thank you. I was wondering about that, about subspecies, just because this osprey um, looks a little bit different than the ones you'll have locally. But also, does anyone know if this adult is a, so the one on the left is the adult and it's feeding the kids. Does anyone know if it's a male or a female? I feel like Martha would know the answer to this, but they're not here. It's in a, in a, um, it says that osprey are found on every continent except Antarctica. In terms of who's feeding, I watched a documentary on ospreys, and in fact, the nest was on Long Island somewhere, 
And the male did all the hunting and the female did all the feeding on, on that pair in this documentary. And then at some point when the young were old enough to fly and, and fledge, the female left and the male stayed behind and continued to help raise the young until they took off more independent. So my guess is it's if they all are the same, then this would be the female and the male's out hunting. So based on what I know about osprey, the females have like a murky band across the chest. So I think with males, the the it's like all white below them. Um, and this one's not turning around, which is why I can't tell for sure. Um, but it's pretty subtle. Yeah, Jamie in the chat said that the adult females are supposed to have a brown necklace, which I always really enjoy when when the birds are described as they're, like their markings are described as necklaces. I feel like it's such a good way to remember it. Um, I also was wondering, is there sound on this? one no it's already it's already on it's probably because it would be so loud <laughs> yeah up in the wind and everything let's see do we feel okay about trying another cam? Yes. Cool. All right. I'm actually going to stop my screen share for a minute while I pull up another cam and then y'all will get to see each other. Can and we watch Baby Moons? Baby Moons. I don't know if they've hatched. Which one, though? The Loon Cam. Okay. And Steph asked in the chat if the last, if the Osprey camera said if it was on a bridge or a platform. My guess is that it was a platform, but I don't know if Megadeepa or Brooks, if it said anywhere. Um, I recently saw an Osprey um nest that was built on top of like a boat that had a crane on the top of it and they um sorry my dog might bark they put a camera up on it and decided not to use the boat for the entire nesting season um and uh there was like a brewery right next to it so they had the the um the live feeder camp on in the brewery, which I thought was really fun. Yeah, you know, I keep bringing up the cams and then um, <laughs> because I've got them full screen so y'all can see them, I don't have the description anymore. So these are loons. I think um, to reshare the screen. Oh, is it not sharing? Oh, okay, hold on. That uh, makes sense. Oh, I see what I did. My fault. Better? Cool. Megadeep, are you able to remind us where these are? Or tell us where these are, these loops? Oh, I've got it. So these are on the, in the lakes region of central New Hampshire. Um, and they, this nest was placed in May. Two eggs were laid before the camera went live. Um, but they think that the first egg was laid on June 17th and the second on June 18th. So that would put the hatch date around July 15th. So just a few more days. Um, it's located on an off grid island. Um, oh, and then this is interesting. The camera connects with the mainland via radio and is powered by batteries recharged by 200 watts of solar panels. 
at night and infrared floodlight lets them see. Let's the researchers see. So no baby loons. No baby loons. I did see the pair a second ago. Are there two there right now? I don't know. I saw the second one a minute ago too. But I don't know if it's there now. Does anyone live somewhere where loons are common? I feel like you, like in North Carolina, you, they're, they will be here every once in a while, but they're very rare. I've seen them in Maine. Yeah. Uh, Derry, New Hampshire. Derry, New Hampshire on a lake. I think it's really cool how in places where they are really common, like Maine, people will refer to the lakes as like, but like by size, like either like a two loon lake or like a four loon <laughs> lake. Um, <laughs> I uh, stayed on a four loon lake once and um, like got up really early and went kayaking and like they were doing um, their vocalizations and like I kind of was able to get sort of close to them but I feel like they're a common um, spark bird or like a, a bird that gets people into birding because the call is so unique and they're also really adorable. <laughs> Oh, wow. And Steph in the chat said that the ones by her have three babies. We've got to wow. get a camera out there. I think we're going to pull away and go to um, either Poland or the Netherlands. Let's see. Oh yeah, this one can have a lot of activity. Let's see, I think it's a little quiet right now. Can someone identify that bird? Just kidding. That is the rarest bird I have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Really deep. It's a cute bird, though. Is it a baby or is it a pregnant female? She looks a little round to me. I don't know, but she's snacking. And why not? Easy breakfast or lunchtime. Um, Steph in the chat said that that is a mama deer. Um, maybe we need to start a feminist deer club because I know <laughs> nothing about deer. <laughs> um, except that they eat my trees. Um, and also Steph asked where this cam is. Is this one in the Netherlands? This okay. is in Poland. Wow. It usually has a lot of, I think, great spotted woodpeckers, is that a thing? And great tits. Which were there a second ago, but now it's just a deer. So, this is this one where there's where there are multiple cams, Negativa, or no? Is it just this? Oh, okay, I'm mixing it up. That's the Germany one where it's raining right now, so it doesn't help. Oh no! All right, as cute as this 
here is um, going to see what we can see in the Netherlands. We can always try the Netherlands, Kim. How do you know that's a female step? So Steph said that um, in order to identify the deer, it's the time of the year and general build, the males get this big neck fur thing, which is very good to know. Thank you. Oh, also I should say um, our geography is somewhat limited by time of day as well. So Megadipa found, as they said, I think hundreds of amazing cameras around the world, but a lot of them are in darkness right now. We'll send you the links for like cams in uh, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, parts of Israel, which are getting dark right now. So. But okay. that means if you wake up in the middle of the night and you really need your fix of birds, you'll always have a cam to go to. So Megadipa, you know what this black one is. You were telling us yesterday with the yellow beak, I think. On the right. Um, I think it's an Eurasian blackbird. It looks kind of brown now, so now I'm confused. Is that just a juvenile? They, sw they switched. The black one flew out of frame. I don't know what this other brown one. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, I think this is a song thrush. No? It looks like a thrush, right? What kind of Definitely dove is that? Like oh, sorry. I'm not really familiar with the European doves slash pigeons. These might actually just be pigeons. Okay. Like, there's a great tit on the lawn right now. That is a great center tit. screen. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's the funniest bird name I've ever heard. Right up there with Dick Sissel. And there's a blue tit right behind it. Oh my god. All the tits. So many tits. It's a feminist bird club. <laughs> <laughs> um, did we identify this the thrush type bird in the corner, the bottom right corner, the brown one? Just throwing oh, an just orange around? Throw it, yeah. It looks kind of, did we say it looks kind of like a juvenile? It's hard to see. No, that was the blackbird, um, which looked lighter than I'd expect a Eurasian blackbird to be, which is why I thought it would be a juvenile. Hmm. I don't know any thrushes in Europe except for song thrush, okay? So I'm gonna call all the thrushes song thrushes. Um, the woodpecker looks huge, but I think it's just the angle. The woodpecker just climbed behind the largest tree trunk. I don't see any woodpeckers. I know, as soon as I started talking about it, it of course disappeared, but, oh, I think it's very, right at the top, you can, like right at the top of the tree where it says camera now, 
I'm pretty sure it's kind of stationed its tail there, but hopefully it'll come back down. But the woodpecker was black and white. What are all of these tiny, um, like yellowish things on the ground? They're finches, right? They do I think they're lemons. <laughs> <laughs> Not those yellowish. I think Europe was all of the fun finches. I mean, yes, we have even gross beaks, but I've never seen one and I've been looking for years. So, uh, Who's this in the in the on the log in the back? With like a well, it just dove down behind the log. Can you describe it? Yeah, I like it. It's kind of brown. It's got like a rust breast, almost like robin. Like, an like a Eurasian robin. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. If that's a thing. <laughs> Sarah asks, which birds eat lemons and limes? They seem untouched. They do. Squirrel birds, maybe? Yeah, squirrels. <laughs> tried to quickly pull up a, some images of, the, of birds in the Netherlands, but everything was in Dutch, so it's not much help to me. One of the woodpeckers looks like it's back on that pine tree in the middle. I think the thrushes are back. I think it's what? The thrushes are back. I'm having trouble seeing things on the screen, not gonna lie. The contrast is like really hard. Yeah, okay, hold on. We're gonna, let me see if we can get another one. If it's active, will be very cool. Yeah. These are great gray owls. And This is in Montana. Um, and these are, probably a lot of you know this, I didn't realize this, these are the biggest owl, largest owl in North America. And I can't, we were looking yesterday, I can't remember that you can see two of the young ones there. I can't remember how many we saw in the nest yesterday. Has anyone seen a great gray owl in, real life. I sure haven't. They look like uh, humans that were turned into birds. Yeah, <laughs> they do. Um, Sarah said, I've only seen barred and snowy owls in real life. 
great owls to see in real life though. And um, Monique says, so amazing. It looks like they're hot, question mark. It's a dream of mine to see one, but they are, ser they are a serious hike to see here. Oh yeah, I feel like it always seems really challenging to go and see them, whether it be hiking or driving a far distance. Um, but it does look like they're hot and cooling themselves down by um, that like panting kind of behavior. And Jamie's seen great horned and screech owls in the wild. Oh, I think it looks like there's maybe three. Mm -hmm. And Sarah asks, the only time I've seen owls in the wild is when someone else pointed them out. Any tips for finding owls? <sighs> I will say primarily the only times I've seen them is when either people are pointing them out or they are flying um, or vocalizing. So um, up where I live in the Catskills near Hunter Mountain, the, I'm so lucky there are uh, barred owls that live um, in the woods. And they, I, I've lived here for two years and I've only seen them twice, but I hear them uh, almost every night. So I think that listening for them in the correct habitats. So depending on what species you want to see, um, kind of looking up what their preferred habitats are within their range and then listening for them. Um, but I will say that especially in urban areas, um, in New York City, we have a pretty big issue with people publicizing their nest locations and going and seeing them and um, leading like paid tours where the leaders will spotlight them and play call, like uh, vocalizations to attract them or disturb them while they're hunting or on their nest, which has caused a lot of fatalities. Um, so I just will definitely, um, caution you against using playback to try to attract the owls um, and using flash cameras and spotlights. Um, and a lot of owls, or maybe not a lot of owls, but great gray owls, their, um, their locations are actually hidden on eBird because they're a sensitive species, I'm pretty sure. So, um, yeah, publicizing a location, like a nest location would um, often like attract people who might disturb them. So um, that's why I'm, I'm like a little confused about, or I'm curious to see if like this nest camera has the exact location even. Um, I feel like it might not. Some other questions. What is the sneakiest, hardest to find bird? <laughs> this is a good question. Owls or woodcocks maybe? Um, I don't know, what do other people think is the sneakiest or hardest to find bird? I've never in my life seen a red-breasted nuthatch. I've heard them, but I don't know where they are. The answer is whatever bird you wanna see the most. Indigo buntings also, um, I've heard them and never seen them. Where are you? I can't see Massachusetts. Massachusetts. We, this spring, this is my first year in North Carolina and um, they've been everywhere this spring. Because wow. I'm, yeah, I'm from Georgia and I never would see them, but for some reason here. Over. I've heard them, but I don't know where they are. <laughs> yeah. I did see a scarlet tanager. tanager. I don't know how to pronounce that word. How do you pronounce that word? 
<laughs> that was right. Tanager or Tanager? Tanager, the, like Tanager. a J. Okay. And I saw a blue gross beak this year. That was really cool. Those are those are really cool. What's an elegant trope? And I have to Google that. They're definitely worth the Google. Um, Tracy in the in the chat said oh, that wow. elegant trogans are the sneakiest birds, which I have tried. I think it was elegant trogan in Arizona. It was like my goal bird to see in a particular location. So I, of course, didn't see it either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks like they're just in like a teeny corner of Arizona and then like a weird stretch of Mexico and then like a little patch in Central America. Cool. Thank you for looking it up. Um, can you describe what the bird looks like, if you don't mind, for those who might not be looking it up right now? Yeah, it has a yellow beak, a green head with like black eye shadow, I would say, and a yellow eye ring, and then like a little stripe of white on the breast, and the rest of the belly is red. And the uh, back feathers look gray from this photo. Yeah, thank you. They're like really striking birds. Oh, its back is green in another photo. That's the male, I think, and the females have another color combination that's like equally striking. And they're huge. They're like, a, I feel like they're like a foot long. I actually, Molly, you said you went to Arizona looking. We, I went to Arizona, this place called Cave Creek Canyon, which I would highly recommend looking up in near Portal, Arizona. A friend and I went because we knew there was really good birding there, but we, neither of us had even heard of a trogan before. And we got there and all these people were trying to find them and we lucked out and saw three. <laughs> so these like yeah. newbies showed up and got really lucky. I think we saw two males and one female and they, they really are worth it. They're like just stunning. I found the female picture, um, yellow beak, same um, kind of whitish yellow eye ring, gray head with like a stripe of white underneath. And then the belly is, the top part is, grayish and the bottom part is red and the feathers on the tail are really cool they're like they have white tips and they're spotted for the rest of it and I can share a link to the picture in the chat oh, cool thank you um yeah Brooks I'm very jealous because I was one of those people in Cave Creek Canyon who looked <laughs> for several hours. I also looked in Madera Canyon for several hours. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry. One day. no, it's okay. <laughs> I saw so many other birds. I mean, just even if I didn't see a single bird, Southeast Arizona is like, it was one of the most beautiful mix of landscapes I've ever seen. Yeah. We have somebody, I think in the chat from Arizona, I don't know if they, or we did, or in the, in the group, I don't know if they, Want to weigh in on this? No pressure. Just saw we had somebody from Arizona here. Oh, and Tracy's going to Madera Canyon next month. Nice. My fingers are crossed for you, Tracy. Um, Steph would love to see a skimmer one day, and Sarah would too. Black skimmers are one of my favorite birds, which is why they're on the 2006 17 uh, Feminist Bird Club patch. Um, if anyone lives near New York or in New York, um, there is a beach called Nickerson Beach on the south side of Long Island, just like an hour away from the city. And if you go before 8 or 9 a.m., um, you can park for free and there are nesting skimmers so you can see them kind of splayed out. Um, they, they're really amazing. There's also nesting least turns, common turns. Um, and yeah, Gina says they're borking. They, the, the noise they make, it's just like a barking, borking noise. <sighs> Such incredible birds. Molly, mm -hmm. is that a year round or is certain kind of time of the year that you see these um, turns and yeah. skimmers? 
That's a good question. It's um, the spring and summer or like end of spring, summer. So they, Thank you. yeah, they arrive. I think the skimmers actually nest like on the later end of the shorebirds or the beach okay. nesting birds. But um, I think there are chicks in okay. July and August. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Right, when y'all were talking about terns, Megadeepa messaged me that there were, um, this is a puffin cam, there aren't any puffins obviously, but there are a bunch of terns here. Mm. I find oh. terns very confusing trying to distinguish, so I don't know if anybody. I think that's a roseate tern right up here, isn't it? The one to the bottom left of the screen. I'm just gonna say, if you think it is, yes, Rosie at Terry. And Steph said there are puffins. There's, you can see little tiny puffin specks in the back. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, there's, I'll use my cursor. Is this one, it looks like there's one over here on the left on this rock too. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if how people have their screens oriented, but if you, um, there's like a, a line that when you hover between the camp, like the, um, the video of the birds and all of our little faces and names, you can toggle that. So if you pull it closer to the, um, like the zoom, the, the names and the videos of the people, you can make the screen bigger to see the birds. So I can see the puffin a little bit better. Oh, here comes another one coming towards us. <gasps> oh my oh, yeah. gosh. There's one here and one oh. here. <laughs> Come <The on>. <laughs> Um, Steph says, if anyone gets a chance to do a seabird cruise up in Acadia in Maine, I highly recommend it. Crossed a lot off my list. Um, I completely endorse this as well. I haven't done a boat trip in Acadia, but I did a puffin cruise a little bit further south in Maine, um, probably almost 10 years ago at this point. And I saw my first puffin. Um, it was just a tiny speck, but it was really incredible. And all the other birds that you can see out in, around those islands too, like cormorants and stuff are also very fun. Is there a best time of year up there? I think it's June and July, but Megadeepa was, I think just up there and maybe has better tips if they're there. Steph says May through July. Yeah, I, I think I went either at the end of July or August. So most of the puffins had gone at that point, which is why I only saw one. I remember that. Um, so yeah. Jamie says tons of pals in Maine are seeing them now. They're all posting pictures like mad. So yeah, I guess now, now's the time to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Sarah asks, what's the difference between bills and beaks? Mm. I don't know. I associate bills more with like aquatic species, but I don't know if that's, I don't know if it's a. Uh... Me too. I'm just curious. Yeah. Like it wouldn't be called a duck beaked platypus because it's definitely a bill but I don't know what the difference is. If it's just like the flat ones, flattish ones are bills and the sharpish ones are beaks. I don't know. It's a great question. It's thank like, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I just said thank you. 
it's like a question that I feel like I've I've answered multiple times or like discussed multiple times because I used to work in an aquarium where we would like mm-hmm. talk about penguins a lot and like penguin anatomy but penguins um, definitely beaks I would say <laughs> yeah which like doesn't really match my aquatic that, yeah, makes non-aquatic sense. theory <laughs> um so if anybody else has any insight please let us know and Mary and Judy ask, what are we looking at right now? An awkward? What am I looking at? It's very it's a decoy. It's, I was going to say, it's very. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> Megan even messaged me there was a close up view of a puppet, and I clicked on puppet cam. I saw this, and I'm like, that's not a puppet. Like, what's happening? <laughs> not the first time i've been fooled by a decoy All right. okay. i sent you the link for it's a puffin burrow it's a different one is it on the list though i just sent the link on slack i know but that's gonna make i think it, it might take me a minute to get in there and i've got to open my slack for the whole screen share um oh uh, will you send the link in this chat actually just send it in the um a Zoom chat. Oh, hold on. And not for everybody to click on now, because that might puffin, puffin incoming. Cause chaos, but <laughs> oh, hey, wait. <laughs> yeah, don't. We don't need the link anymore. That was really, really fun to see fly in. Oh, I missed it. I was looking at the trying to look at the chat. <gasps> wow. Oh. <laughs> They really are so cute. Do we, do, what is, does anyone know what this decoy is even supposed to be? Um, in the chat, someone said Guillemont, which okay. Guillemont or a mirror. Um, oh, sorry, y'all. I, it, it, I agree with uh, common marmy. Well, I'm pause this. Bring it over here. Oh, sleepy puffin. Oh, if there's a baby puffin under there, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what a baby puffin looks like. I have to look it up. Yeah, I'm going to too. And I can definitely hear common turns in the background. Apparently, they're according to the internet, they're called puffins. So, I was up at Hog Island. Um, a couple weeks ago and got to land on Eastern Egg Rock where um, they have a puffin colony. And it was crazy. It was only two or three days since the first pufflings had hatched on Eastern Egg Rock. So we didn't get to see any of them. Um, but on Hog Island, like that's where they have like these summer camps for adults. Um, one of the cool things is they have a tradition of cream puffins, I think is what they call it. But it's basically, it's an eclair and like with a sugar cookie attack, like, like the head is a sugar cookie. I don't know, it's basically an edible puffin and it's dessert and it's so good. And you know what? There's like this whole article about the history of like where it came from. So I'm gonna find that link, but everyone was really excited about it. and I 
didn't know why until it landed on my plate. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cute. I cannot eat this anymore. A quick Google also tells me that eating a uh, raw puffin heart is a thing in Iceland. So that's interesting. Does anyone know what we're doing? Brooks, I was wondering if we could go to the tree feeder in Germany. I just pasted the link in the chat for you. Oh, I know. I think I have that one on there. Well, okay. Yeah, the chat the I have that one on. And yeah, definitely still common turns that we're hearing. Uh -oh, hold on Maybe Rosie, it turns. Gina said turn bullshit is what we were hearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh arctic arctic turns too is this one uh, is this one also on the um, playlist this is the germany ones on the playlist right great question i think it is i don't did you which chat did you put it in zoom Oh, not so um, and just oh yeah yeah no. Um, I just wanted to say I know that when I made the event bright, I put that the time that we were gonna just be here for an hour, and so we have gone over. Um, okay. if anybody is feeling tired, we definitely won't be offended if you if you hop off. Um, <laughs> it, I think that we are gonna plan to wrap up around one thirty. Sorry about that. This looks like a nice toothbrush. Oh, wow, it won't let me, uh, it won't end. Oh, it's because I, I thought it was So this is Germany. Is that a hairy woodpecker on the left? I don't think we have hairy woodpeckers in Germany. Yeah, the hairy would have the wouldn't have the red on. Top. So what type of woodpecker is it? That's a great question. <laughs> Isn't it? Um, thought I knew this, but I'm gonna look it up again. It is funny though, it, it, the size and shape and from the side, it does look a lot like a hairy. But there's blue tits on that ring kind of feeder in the middle. And yeah, I think I saw a great tit somewhere. Could it be a Syrian woodpecker? Um, yeah, I'm looking now that. And Mikkel also suggested a red crowned woodpecker. So the Syrian looks like the red is farther back to me. 
this stream happens to also come with a list of potential birds we can see. And I think you're great spotted. Did someone suggest great spotted woodpecker? Yeah, Jetson in the chat. I think that's right. Um, from this document, which, you know, we're gonna put all the links in the chat in a minute, but in the YouTube description, he has the, uh, the link and the woodpeckers, the options are great spotted, European green woodpecker, this is not a green woodpecker, um, and black woodpecker, which would be all black. Anyway, so this is a great spotted, I guess. Yeah, now that I'm looking at the great spotted, I agree. The Syrian came up as a rare bird in Germany. I keep thinking that yellow stain on the bottom of the right corner of uh, right bird feeder is a bird. It's definitely not. <laughs> okay, I just, I... I'm really happy because lots of people in the chat are talking about how they've enjoyed this experience. Mm -hmm. um, and Rebecca, I'm, I don't want to call you out, but um, it's Rebecca's first birding event. So I just think everyone should give a happy round of applause <laughs> because it's so cool. Um, Congrats, I Rebecca. <laughs> I'm just so glad that everyone came out today um, and I mean if this was my first birding experience I think that I would also be very excited. This is definitely a lot more uh, variety than one would see on a, an in-person outing but it, I promise it's still very fun. And, Especially and in July. <laughs> it can get yeah. kind of quiet. It looks like maybe Erica the same thing first outing. Really? Yeah. Yay, Erica! <laughs> Yay, Erica! Yay, everyone! Thanks for sitting with us as we were like trying to figure out how this works or even how long this is gonna go. Um, but if you have any feedback on like how we could do better or what else you want to see, let us know. We'll. Um, I'm gonna put the link for the largest playlist I have here. A lot of things we didn't get to today because there wasn't much action going. It is the middle of the day in a lot of places and um, it's raining in Panama, which is a feeder I really wanted to see. Um, so maybe tomorrow, if you guys get to look at it, it'll have more action. Yeah, and I think, um, is it Rebecca who said, you know, they felt intimidated before with birding events. And if, um, I don't know if there's an FBC, a feminist bird club in your area, but I think that's definitely one of the things FBC strives to do is, is make, make it really open and not intimidating, welcoming to everybody, no matter the level. So we get a ton of first time birders at almost every event we do here which is great. Oh, you're in Durham. Cool. Well, hopefully we'll see you live at the next one, Rebecca. That's awesome. Yes, I'll definitely be there. Great. Cool. Also, Phil, we have an Instagram for the Durham one. Feel free to message us with any questions or anything like that. Yeah, that's exciting. Oh, and Jamie just said, if you all haven't played Wingspan yet, it's a great birding board game you might be interested in for, for those of you who spend a lot of time inside. And I can, I definitely agree with this. I actually play the video game a little bit more than the board game since there's so much less setup, but both of them are so fun, so 
soothing. They really, I feel like it really replicates um, like the meditative aspects of birding um, and the music on the video game for Switch is very good and you can play it by yourself. Um, yeah, I will. I was I was about to say this, and then I saw Sarah's comment. My the first time I played Wingspan, my sister in law tried to figure it out on a family vacation, and it took us like an hour and a half or two hours just to figure out how to play. So it's very frustrating at first, but once if if you can get through that, which I I completely agree, it's really complicated. It is really fun, but if you are interested in playing it. Um, just know that going in that it's really complicated at first once you get used to it it all makes sense but it takes a while I think there are green finches on the right too Peter I think they're called green finches yeah Jacqueline wrote those little yellow birds look like male green finches they're so pretty it's so fun i've never even heard of a green finch before europe gets all the fun finches i really like the shaft finches also which i've seen on the stream before but just not today and those are kind of like pink with like bluish wings it's it's really I love this. Can we do it every week? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I, with a focus on different regions per week would be really interesting. Um, I think that I might have too much of like a a hard time with screens to do it every week, but maybe oh, fair. <laughs> we could maybe do it eventually, maybe once a month if if That'd be great if um we could like gather a couple more people to to help facilitate i would be happy to volunteer oh, thank how you. do we do that <laughs> um i'm gonna put my email address all right in the chat but, awesome yeah, I'd love to get in touch Thank you. Still very distracted by just like, the bird shaped stain on the bottom of the rightmost feeder. <laughs> yeah. I keep that thinking looks, that's a bird. That's not a bird. <laughs> it's like the same color as a green finch. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's the um the mechanism that like maybe holds the bird seed up. Oh, and on my two feeder it's metal. But yeah. I think it's plastic in this one. Yeah, I can definitely, I have a clear view. I can confirm, not a bird. Don't I worry. mean, I know it's not a bird. It's just, okay. I didn't know it if it was blurry enough. That shape. <laughs> well, I didn't know if it was one of those cases where something's yeah. too far away and you're like, can't quite tell. <laughs> but yeah, like Molly was saying, I had so much fun with this event, but I also really struggle with using screens. Um, so it's not something I can commit to every week, but I'm so happy so many people showed up. I did not expect these many people to come and have a good time. So thank you. Um, and then we also got another question about black cap coal tits. Are the, oh, are the ones with black caps cold tits? They're either cold tits or great tits. There's one on the left most feeder now. That's a blue tit. Okay. Cool. Shall we wrap this up? Well, yeah, I guess it's after 1.30. Um, well, I... I'm gonna let Brooks close everything up, but I just wanted to say thank you. And um, I hope to see you all again soon. This was really fun. Yeah, I mean, I think y'all already said pretty much everything. Um, this was really fun. I think the turnout was great. And 
um, and it's really good to hear that people have such a good time. Um, and it, so, you know, especially for this to be a couple of people's first time, and and most of us probably, certainly mine, first time birding like this. Um, so it was really fun. Thanks for sharing it with us. Um, if you're, you know, if you're planning to donate to Repro Justice, please do. If you already did, um, thank you. And if you if you can't do that right now, that's fine too. Thank you so much for joining us. And um, yeah, uh, I think everybody's probably already plugged into how to keep up with Feminist Bird Club events. Um, and you have Molly's email address now. Um, so yeah, I think we'll definitely look at, at how often we can do these in the future and there should be more information coming out from us then. Hi, y'all.